Mercedes-Benz M112 and M113 engines, MAP sensor replacement, MAP hose replacement, and air injection changeover valve holes replacement. Check the pink comment for the TOM stamps. Diagnostics is next. The MAP sensor removal starts at about the 220 mark. The hose removals start at about the 6 minute mark. I got a comment from a viewer asking about how to replace this hose, so I thought let's shoot a video. I took the plastic cover off here so we can get a better look. This is the MAP sensor here. There's a hose that runs from the MAP or manifold absolute pressure sensor to the air intake manifold. This MAP sensor gives the engine computer information for quite a few different conditions. So if you're in here because you've got a P0106 code, which will come up as an MAP circuit code, it's possible that it is the sensor. They don't typically fail, but they can fail. It's also, it's probably more likely though that there's a problem on the electrical circuit. So check the circuit out before you replace the sensor. Sensors are only about, I think, 30 or $40. Um, do get a good one though. You don't want to, um, you don't want a cheap one because uh, this info is used for the ECU for a number of different conditions. And if you got a MAP sensor that's sending bad data to the ECU, you're going to kind of be chasing your tail trying to figure out where the fault is. If you're here because you have a P0400 code, which is an EGR, exhaust gas recirculation code, and you've already gone back and checked your EGR valve and in, in the pipe and everything's good, the port's clear, everything looks good in the back and you're kind of scratching your head, then come up here and check this hose because this MAP sensor is part of the logic for the EGR valve and it's relying on good data for, from uh, the manifold if the hose gets disconnected back here, which will sometimes happen after either an alternator replacement or a water pump replacement because people have to move this bracket to do those jobs, or it just gets old, gets a hole in it, you get bad data at the MAP sensor, and the MAP sensor will trip an EGR code, specifically that 0400 code. So you can see in this video how to replace either this sensor or the hose. So here we go. If you're here to see just the hose replacement, skip ahead to that timestamp. Real quick, I'll show how to do the sensor replacement, which is um, easier even than the hose replacement, which also isn't too difficult. So this fastener here is an E8. We just get on there and loosen that up. Okay, we can grab that fastener now. Hopefully not drop it. And there it is. Now you can see this sensor. We can kind of pull out. There's a hose on the back of it. You're actually going to be looking at the new hose because I'm doing this part of the video after I've already replaced this hose. But if you need more slack than this, Go to the other part of the video where I show you how to get a little bit more slack um, through the hose replacement. Otherwise, you can just reach your hand back here and wiggle this off the hose like so. It's going to be easier for me to do this because this is a brand new hose that I just installed. But if your hose is real brittle, watch the rest of the video to see how to replace the hose. To disconnect the electrical, we have this clasp up here, and we're going to press down on that part to clear that clasp. These are very brittle, so sometimes it works to push it. So I'm going to push it this way first, push it that way first to kind of loosen it up, then press that clasp and pull this up. But you don't want to break it, and like I said, it can be very brittle. So it's cleared. Now it's coming. Almost. There it goes. Okay. So there is the sensor. Now there's nothing wrong with this sensor. I just wanted to show how to disconnect it. Hopefully that's a good look there at those numbers. And at this point you would grab, if you're replacing this, you would grab your new one. There's nothing wrong with this one, so I'm just going to put it right back in. You can plug in the electrical first or the hose. I think I'm going to go with the hose. And again, this is a new hose. I do recommend replacing the hose, so keep watching the video to see how to do that. Put it on there and make sure you get it all the way on there and snug. All the way on there and snug all the way. See that? All right, 
And then the electrical goes on the same way we took it off, obviously, which is going to be like that. And um, like I said, these get a little bit brittle. Ideally, you want to push it in until it snaps, but it might not snap because it might, it might just be kind of past it, so to speak. But let's see. We'll push it in. Maybe I'll get a snap. Mm, no snap. So give it a, oh, it just snapped there. So give it a good wiggle anyway. Make sure that you didn't disconnect your hose in the back. Hose is still connected, so we're good. And now we can just put this back. There's a feature right there that accommodates the hose. So we can push that right back in place. Grab our fastener. And that's it. That's all there is to change in the sensor. So if you want to change the hose, just keep watching the video. So that is how to replace just the MAP sensor here. To replace the hose, you saw where it connects. The other end connects to the intake manifold back here. It's only about a foot long. And it is possible to move this and reach it. It's a little tricky though. So I'll show you how to do that real quick. And I'll also show you how to move this component, the secondary air pump. If you decide you want to not remove the secondary air pump because sometimes this connector over here feels like it's going to be a little too brittle and break, you can work around it. I'll show you how to do that real quick here. If we look at this, this plastic, this plastic here is just a cover for some electrical. We have some little clips. You can pull that clip back and lift it up. And then over here, same deal on this side. Pull it back and lift it up. And then the next one behind it, give yourself a little bit more slack. And let's see on this side, on this side, we don't have another one, so that's okay. Oops, did that just go back on there? Yes, it did. Okay, so you want to be able to lift this up here. And then right here, this is just going to pop off. Like so. And now I'll grab the camera. What you would do is just kind of hold this up out of your way and work around it. Okay, here is what I mean. If you want to just work around the pump, lift this up, lift this up. Let me just pull this little hose out of the way here. And you see those two hoses there? You can see the new hose. Uh, it's that one there. This is the hose that connects the other side to the MAP sensor. This is the one that goes to the air injection changeover valve. So if you've got long, if you've got needle nose pliers, and you can get in there and manipulate it. Um, you can try this. Otherwise, you can just remove the secondary air pump, which I will show next. This component here is a secondary air pump, and it's in our way, so we're going to remove it. Um, it's very easy to remove. We just have to lift this air hose up here, remove this uh, E10 fastener, and disconnect the electrical for it. Here's the electrical for the secondary air pump on the side. There's just two little claps, and we're going to push in there where there's those little marks for our fingers and just kind of give it a wiggle and pull it up and there's two prongs give it a little persuasion here oh it's shy isn't it there we go we'll pull that up like that and then next here we have an e tense fastener and this is um this is a ground connection you can see there So we'll go ahead and open this up. So there's that fastener. I always like to put a piece of tape on grounds on the fastener so that I don't accidentally just put the fastener back in without the ground. This way I'll know that that goes back in there together. Right back here, there's a hose connection. We can just kind of sneak under here and lift up like so. And now, well, you, you see this already moved forward. That was like that. We can just rock this forward and this whole this whole thing will come out and we have room to work. There we go. So with the pump out of the way, we can see two hoses. One goes here to our MAP sensor. And see it going in right back into the back of it. And the other one has this blue on it and that goes up here to the secondary air injection changeover valve. We're going to go ahead now and remove this little fastener. This is an E8 here, this little fastener. And we'll just remove that so we get a little better grip. 
There's that little fastener. And we can pull this up and around now. You can always undo this electrical if you need more room, but I think I'll be good with it in. And looks like this hose probably legit does need replacing. I don't know if I have that hose size on me right now. But we'll go ahead and disconnect it anyway. And then I can always take it over to the parts shop and see what size. So I'm just going to give it a little encouragement here. Nothing too aggressive because that's a plastic fitting there on the MAP. So let's see if I can just pop it off now. Okay, yeah, looks like it'll come off now. There we go. So if my sources are correct, the other side of this MAP hose is this here. Not that one, that one there. Sorry for blocking the camera. I'm just going to loosen it up a little. And then see if I can persuade persuade it to come off in more or less one piece. Let's see. There it goes. Okay. That is indeed it there. Okay. So it pulls out just like that. This was just going to be a demo video, but I'll go ahead and pull this out and replace this hose since it does need replacing. Uh, where'd you go over there? Okay. I'm going to pull that out. So here's our old hose, and to size it, you want to look look at the size at the end that's the smallest. Since this is the same diameter hose, the full length, this side stretched out a bit. That's the side that was on the MAP sensor, probably just from being at such that angle. So this is the side you would want to measure, and it looks like this is 3.5 millimeter inside diameter. And I say that because I've got some 3.5 here after all. And you can see that's the same inside diameter. Outside diameter is a little bit different, but that's okay. Inside diameter is what we're looking for. And this is what I got. Pulled that out of that bag there that I had on hand, which says Mercedes. And it's got a Mercedes part number on there. It's probably an aftermarket version. And um, I can't remember off the top of my head where I got this. Probably like FCP Euro or um, Auto House AZ. I'll try to put that up and put that part number up. But what we can do is use the, uh, use the old hose to figure out the, the length, right? Just lay it out and give yourself a little extra. So I'll cut that there. But right now I'll just show you how to get a clean cut. If you don't have hose cutters, to get a clean cut, use a razor blade. And don't just push down and smush it. You want to have some slicing action. Slicing action. And that'll give you a nice clean cut on a hose like this. There we go. So that'll work. As far as I know, there isn't anything special about this OE hose. Other than that, it's got to take some high heat since it's in this location up here by the manifold. But not crazy high heat. So I would think that... Um, any good vacuum hose that you that you got would probably work. But if I can find a part number for this from Mercedes, I will try to do that. I'll go ahead and slip this on here now. If it's real hard to slip it on, on yours, you can just barely lubricate it with a little um, engine oil or something. That's going on pretty well. And that is a good fit. So then we'll run this back through here. This is just hard as a rock on this one. Again, like as, the, as a clue for the high heat, I suppose. We'll run that back through there, and here we are out on the bottom. Here's our MAP sensor, and we'll slip on that. Make sure we got a good fit there. But that is nice and snug, and it is nice and snug. This bracket here, if I can show, it's got a little spot. A little feature there to accommodate the hose. <laughs> it's kind of interesting, so we'll put that back over that way and we'll grab our fastener and we'll put this back in place and just get that tacked down and that's it while I'm in here I might as well replace this hose here too for the changeover valve since it's probably also an original and it looks like it's the same size now this one's just a little different when it comes down over to this side and I'll show you that in a second Gonna require a little persuasion here. There we go. Let's 
And on the other side of this one, let me pull it up so you can see it a little bit better. There's this blue thing. This just pulls apart like this, and then we will reuse this blue thing. Let's pull this hose out. Looks like it's probably about the same length as the other hose. There it is there, and then what I mean is, if I can get this to keep focus, what I mean is we'll just pull the old hose out off of this, this blue feature so that we can reuse this one for our new hose. Looks like it's just moving now. There's a plastic feature on this blue hose here, so you don't want to get too crazy. Oops, sorry. There it is. Now I'm just going to go measure the hose the same way and get a new length of this. It looks like looks like the 3.5 millimeter size hose will work on this as well. This blue thing here is a check valve. You can see it's got an arrow on there. And the way to test this is just to put a little piece of hose on one end, clean hose. And then you're going to you should be able you should be able to suck air through. All right? So it's showing the direction of airflow. If if you um on the other end of this hose here, if you suck, you should be able to suck air through, but if you blow air here, it should not, you should um, be pushing up against the diaphragm and you should not be able to get air out here. Here's what I mean. You'll hear the clicking noise. So that's sucking air through here, and then alternatively, if I try to blow air through, here's what it does. Hear that little noise? So it won't let you blow air through. You can check it either way, obviously. You can check it this way, too. But while you have it out, you might as well check it. So going this way, you, you should be able to blow air through it. Which you shouldn't be able to suck air through it. So this little check valve is good. I'm going to be connecting there, obviously. So I guess I'll try to maybe keep it on this side of it. We'll see if it'll push through that way. It might just kind of its own thing. There it goes. Now I guess I'll go ahead and put this side in first. Get on there. Let's snug it down real well. Okay, make sure that it's all the way down. And then on the other side, we've got our hose sticking out here. I'm going to push that up a little bit. There's the other side that to focus. Grab our little deal. And you went with the black side going in that way. Make sure that's in there nice and snug. And then the blue side goes in here. Make sure that's nice and snug. And there we go. All right, got a couple new vacuum hoses in. So I did want to mention something else. Uh, let's look over here. This vacuum hose right here. Don't fiddle with this vacuum hose. Let me grab the camera and show you what I mean. This is the hose that I'm talking about. If you're on a hose replacement spree, don't get back here and have a look at this and say, oh, cool, I'll just run my needle, needle nose down there and pull down and yank that hose out and replace it. It doesn't work that way on this hose, unfortunately. It's apparently a very terrible design because in this little area in here, in a chamber that's below two layers of RTV that's assembled during, that's installed during assembly on this, you have to do two splits on this intake manifold to get through a specialized grommet that Mercedes put in there that is um, a component, apparently a component on this hose. You can't buy any of these parts from Mercedes. And so nobody quite knows. They want you to, you know, buy the whole intake, I guess, with the hose already in it. But the the point that I'm, the reason I'm mentioning this is don't tug on that hose down there thinking you're just going to slip it off a fitting like you saw up here. It's not like that. You cannot just pull on that hose to remove it. So if you have a problem with this hose, hopefully it's up here. Like this part here will fray because it's at this angle and all. Hopefully you have a leak up here. And in that case, you, what you want to do is cut the hose just right behind the leak, 
put in a connector, just a, a hose fitting connector, put in your new stretch to replace that part and then leave it there. And then if later you get a hole here, then you do that. And if later, hopefully you, um, you don't have to deal with that hose way down there um, because it is a big job. I've got the inspection mirror there. We're looking at the bottom of where that hose turns back up and goes in and you can see that it's not just a fitting. You can actually see how it kind of flares. And I'll, I'll put up a picture of what this looks inside from when people have uh, actually split this manifold. It's not something that you can just pull out and replace the hose, unfortunately. It's um, a pretty terrible design from what I've read on the forums and stuff. If you're not having a problem down there on the hose, leave that hose in place. If you're just trying to mitigate for a break up here, which is usually where they break because of this, this little kind of curve and you can even kind of see there this hose is getting pretty old use the fitting solution and leave that old stretch of hose in there until you absolutely must positively deal with it but if you do want to replace another hose while you're in here you can do this this one I obviously replaced this at some point because this is like brand new this looks like this is also a 3.5 millimeter so um, all of these stretches look like they're around about a foot or so so if you got three foot or a meter, because they sell this stuff in, by the meter. If you got a meter of this 3.5 millimeter hose, you could replace this and then those two lines that we did. So just double check you got everything connected on your lines that you did. We can go ahead and get the air pump back in place. I'm just gonna flip this back under like there because it seems to work a little better having that there. And remember with the air pump, it's just gonna rock right in. We have these two features here. They fit right in those spots. Electrical goes facing that side, so we can just pop this in like so. All right, I guess I can go ahead and hook this air hose up. There we go, and then we need our ground, our fastener with the ground on there. Don't put it in like this, make sure you put it in like that. And this was an E10. I'm going to leave this a little bit loose so I can move that. I'll go ahead and plug this electrical back in. This has got those two, and hopefully I'll get a little feedback with a snap, but maybe not. Let's see. Sort of snap. Give it a good wiggle. Make sure it's on there. All right, now I'm going to kind of hold this with my finger as I tighten this, and we'll torque that down. Torque on this is 106 inch-pounds. So not crazy tight, but tight enough for good ground. And I just kind of hold that so it doesn't tug on that electrical. There we go. Now I can go like that. All right. And let me double check that I've got that. There we go. I'll push that on there all the way. Make sure that I've got a good connection there. And that's it. So we can pop this trim piece back on here. And... And that's it. So thanks for the comment because uh, your inquiry got me thinking about making a video and it turns out that um, this ML, this is my sister's ML too, so you saved me a possible P0400 troubleshoot since that hose obviously needed replacing. So I hope this video was helpful for you. Thank you for watching and good luck with your repair.